16,000 vehicles per day, and of those, more than 80% of people were traveling about 35 miles per hour along the corridor. And when we did see people bicycling along Mulberry, often we'd see them on the sidewalk. Today, the West Mulberry Street now provides protective bike lanes and a center turn lane with the additional space provided from a travel lane reduction. So this project is not without its controversy or challenges, and I won't get into that tonight. Um, but the fact is we're seeing people, like the picture on the right, traveling with their kids along the corridor, which we would not see before unless it was on the sidewalk, perhaps. And we're seeing people, like the picture on the left, trying to eat a banana while they're biking <laughs> on the corridor. So this is clearly indicating that people are feeling more comfortable riding along West Mulberry Street. And that's also clear from the surveys that we've done of this corridor following the implementation of the project. We're hearing that people feel much more comfortable and safer traveling along uh, Mulberry by bike, but we're also hearing the same thing for people to drive and walk along the street. As we implement better bike infrastructure, we are encouraging people to, to use that infrastructure, to use those new routes and building awareness of those new routes through events like Open Streets, where we're seeing up to 9,000 people come out to experience these, these new routes um, on a car-free day. And then we also do events like Bike to Work Day, again, to promote what's new in the community and to support um, cycle commuting. Education is key to safety, but also encouragement, and we've focused our education on all levels um, and for all modes, beginning with safe routes to school, so getting that education early on to start those behaviors, to offering programs like Adult Learn to Ride, so we find that people, you know, especially if they move back to Fort Collins and they see how bike-friendly the community is, they want to get back on a bike, and they may not have the tools or the resources to do that. So we're offering programs for people to be able to do that and to feel comfortable getting out and riding to our Bicycle Friendly Driver Program. The Bicycle Friendly, Friendly Driver Program is our most recent addition to um, our education curriculum. And this has gone international in terms of its adoption. The program trains people who drive for their jobs as well as the general public and has been key to reducing crashes because we know that um, crashes are not just at the fault of the bicyclists, so we're seeing that about 50-50. So it's been important for us to reach the other half um, of people that are using our streets um, throughout the city. And that is a program that is readily available to download. We have the entire curriculum, so if Longmont, Longmont may already be using it, I'm not sure, but um, that is available for any community to use. So Fort Collins is embracing the latest transportation options as well, whether it's bike share, e-bikes, or e-scooters, and looking at how these options can fill mobility needs and encourage sustainable travel throughout Fort Collins. We do have a bike share program today, and I believe it's the same as, as Longmont's. Um, we're gearing up to bring an e-scooter share program and trying to do that in a regulated way. And then we're also working to change our regulations so that we actually allow e-bikes on our paved trails, and I believe Longmont um, already does allow e-bikes on its paved trails, but this is a way for us to open up uh, another transportation option for people throughout the community. And what we're seeing, which we believe is a reflection of all the different strategies I've talked about tonight, is that bike crashes are coming down in Fort Collins. Severe crashes are down 35% in the last five years, as well as total crashes. And safety at the end of the day is our primary goal. And with that, thank you. And I will also be here after if anybody wants to come and chat about what's going on in Fort Collins. So thank you. Thank you again, Professor, for sharing all those wonderful examples from your community. So to help us turn to projects happening in Longmont, I'm going to introduce Tom Street. Tom is a professional engineer working over 20 years with the city of Longmont. During the last 10 years, he has served as an engineering administrator, helping to lead both people and projects. Please welcome Tom. Good evening, folks. Uh, as Holly mentioned, my name is Tom Street. I'm a civil engineer with the city. Tonight, we also have many other of our project managers and engineers in attendance, and 
these are the folks who are responsible for the design and construction of the transportation projects that we're going to talk about tonight. For, tonight, for tonight's format, we have project stations set up for a variety of alternative modes and multimodal type of projects. We have projects that will construct uh, multi-use paths. We have projects that will construct greenway trail connections. We have projects that will install various types of on-street bike lanes. We have projects that will build missing sidewalk segments. And we also have projects that will improve bike and pedestrian safety and access. The construction timeline for these projects will vary. We have some projects that are going to construction yet this year, and we have some projects that won't be built until 2020 or 2021. I also wanted to mention that the city has a new information sharing tool called Story Maps. Story Maps is a GIS-based application. It's interactive. And it's going to be a new way for Longmont to share project information with the community. Uh, this platform has the ability to use images, videos, narratives to create a more robust and more descriptive project story. Tonight, we do have a dedicated station set up for Story Maps. So be a good opportunity for you to come by, view, and ask questions about this new way of sharing information within the city. At this point, we're going to break out into our individual project stations. And at each of these stations, we're going to have staff available. We'll have our project managers. We'll have our engineers available to provide an overview of the project and to answer, hopefully answer, any questions that you may have. Lastly, on behalf of the city, I would like to thank you for your interest in and attendance at tonight's event. Thank you, folks. Thank you.